<laughs> oh, hey, Whitney, I got a new bar. Oh, why do you need another bar? Oh, it's a little different than these ones. Oh, so so this one? Yeah, that, that's pretty different. Well, that is pretty cool, but it's not like that. This one goes on your cable machine and has multiple grips and stuff. Oh, so it's this one. Uh, no, it's a little different than that. It has sleeves, you can put plates on it. Hmm, so this one? Oh, uh, a little bit, but it's a little different. Let me show you. See? How are they different? Uh, a different company makes some. You have a problem. I have a home gym. Today we'll be reviewing and talking about my first impressions of the Rep Cambered Swiss Bar, which I've had for about a week now and I've taken it through every workout and every exercise and variation of exercises that I could think of that you might want to use one of these things for. But after posting this to my Instagram story, I had a lot of people DM me reaching out asking if I could get the review out as soon as possible. And I've never really been one to finish first, but for you guys, I'll make an exception just this one time. Now, there are a lot of bars like this, but I think Rep's bar has some unique characteristics to it, so it's not just a clone of somebody else's product. So we're gonna talk about and compare this to other popular options for bars that would compete directly with this thing. At $290 shipped, Rep has placed them into a really interesting and intelligent position. They're priced low enough to compete with Titan and Bells of Steel, but not so high that your first thought is a direct comparison to Kabuki. And based on what I've seen from this bar, that's the most logical place for this thing. It's a bit of a classic Rep item where they balance quality and price and typically deliver pretty well on both. It's not perfect, but I do think it's gonna be the go-to choice for a ton of people looking for a cambered multi-grip bar. So let's talk about what I do and don't love about this thing. The first thing you might be wondering is why would you want one of these things? Essentially, what can it do that other bars can't? And this is where I disagree with not only Rep, but most companies that make this type of a bar. They create these beautiful ads where the person does everything with this thing. Curls, skull crushers, changes the light bulbs, tenderizing the chicken. But the issue is, as you're adding weight to this bar, that weight sits on these sleeves. And if you're using these two middle grips, that bar is always gonna wanna correct itself and stay vertically. Now, it's not an issue with vertical movements like bench, overhead press, or when you're using these outside handles, or even when you have it hooked up to a cable machine, since that cable is hooked to the center of the bar. But for those other flashy video clips companies like to push, The reality is, as you add weight to that bar, then it's gonna to wanna to reorient itself, and it's your wrist that's gonna fight that motion. So essentially, you're just putting unnecessary strain on a sensitive part of your body. Long term, I think it's not ideal, and I'd rather use something else, dumbbells, a curl bar, or whatever. Now I know somebody in the comments is gonna argue, I've been working out for 43 years, and it's not an issue. But I don't argue with physics, and I don't argue with that guy. So can you do those things with this bar? Of course, but as you add weight, the stress increases, and personally, it's not something I do. Those issues are mitigated with a flat multi-grip bar like the Titan Angle multi-grip, which we've reviewed on this channel, which you'd lose your camber with a bar like that. Another benefit of a multi-grip bar is that by having multiple sets of handles, it allows you to create more variation in your workouts by having that close shoulder and wide grip. Besides that, another reason they exist is that you can get a greater range of motion in certain exercises. With bench, for example, that depth can help you develop better low-end pressing strength. But this camber can also be useful in adding extra range of motion with rows and other exercises as well. Now with Rep's bar, that extra depth is really only felt when you're using those outside grips. And that's the trade-off with Rep designing this thing to fit in basically all power racks. The interior two sets of handles are gonna function much like a multi-grip bar. It's not necessarily a negative, just something you might wanna keep in mind. That's not to say you can't bench with the other two. I use the closest grip for close grip bench and the middle grip works quite well as an alternative to straight barbell bench. The neutral and angled grips reduce stress in the shoulder, wrists, and el elbows and it tends to cancel out any additional pain that that extra depth might cause. Now this bar is 80 and a half inches long with 14 inch loadable sleeves, 51 and a quarter inches between the collars and 36.75 inches in this main section here, which gives a good amount of space in a narrower 41 inch interior width rack like reps, but also some room on wider 49 inch outside racks like a Rogue Monster. It's listed at an 810 pound weight capacity, and I don't know why companies have to get so specific with their weight capacities. Or was another company listed at 800, and Rep was like, nah, we're 810. 
The hard chrome sleeves are a great addition because a lot of companies to save money will just use powder coated sleeves, but that powder coating gets ripped up in like two weeks and they just look ugly. So this hard chrome will hold up and look much better for a long time. They're also smooth sleeves and they have a 50 millimeter standard diameter so you can use your normal collars on them. Which doesn't sound like much, but buying a budget bar and then spending more on it to keep the plates secure is a bit counterproductive. The sleeves also have a laser cut rep logo on the end, which looks pretty good. And the rest of the bar is finished in a black powder coat, which is really just pretty standard for this type of bar. It's well finished, it's slightly textured, and it came out clean, but it's just a black powder coat. It's really nothing to get too excited about, so I'll just insert a clip of Winnie. It's functional and durable, though I have nicked mine up a few times, but I'm not really delicate. I will say the nice thing about black powder coat is you can touch it up with flat black paint and it'll look like new. The diameter on the handles is 35 millimeters, and to put that into perspective, an Olympic or a powerlifting bar typically run from 28 to 29 millimeters, so it might take you a little bit of time to get used to putting your hand around something that thick. Functionally, it hasn't affected me, or Winnie, but could if you have smaller hands or are trying to do some type of heavy rows with it, for example. The knurling is really not that exciting, but I feel like that's just because anytime you powder coat knurling, it just fills it in and covers it so much that it all just feels similar to me. But not all Swiss bars are knurled. It's cleaner than something you get from like a Titan Fitness, and since you're not deadlifting with it, and it works just fine for rows and pretty much everything else, I wouldn't be too worried. There are three sets of handles at nine, 18, and 25 and three quarter inches, with the interior handles being more angled, and then they get more neutral as you work your way outward. And that's to keep your joints stacked and in a more natural pressing position, and it's very Kabuki-like. Having multiple sets of handles, as I mentioned before, is one of the reasons these bars appeal to people. Multiple handles and widths allow us to vary our workouts more. It's listed with a two and a half inch depth on this camber, but since this widest grip isn't actually mounted as low as these sleeves, it's probably closer to two inches. Now, since this is a flat camber bar, unlike a Bells or a Kabuki bar, you can flip the bar around to simulate a board press with it or get creative with it and come up with a ton more variations for exercises. It has a removable eye hook, which allows you to hook it up to whatever type of cable system you have and gives you a ton more uses for this thing so you can look like this guy. Did they Photoshop his abs? Sorry, I found that listing and really felt like more people needed to see it. If I nitpicked this thing, I'd say the threading doesn't really need to be this long, and I wish it aligned perfectly when tightened, but you're not spinning when you move this thing, so that eye bolt doesn't have to be really tight. And when you do hand tighten it down, it doesn't gouge up to finish. Now somebody in the comments is going to mention how the sleeves are removable, so it might be a little bit awkward to move between your power rack and your cable setup. And if you have a smaller space, that might be an issue, but I suppose since I haven't seen it pulled off yet, I don't really see it as a big one for me. It weighs 45 pounds, which is great because it keeps the mass simple, and it's kind of rare for this type of bar. It is important, and I should also mention that cambered bars will flip while resting in the J-cups since its center of gravity is higher because of that camber. But I just use these round J-cups so that I don't have any issues. But if you are using a standard flat J-cup, it's something to make note of. It came packaged very well in bubble wrap foam and in a single box, and mine arrived undamaged, and I assume most people would have a very similar experience. You do have to assemble it as it comes shipped without the sleeves attached, but it's very straightforward and simple. The hardest part of assembling it is making sure you don't put the sleeves on upside down, which mine were. But in my defense, my seven-year-old son put it together. So, okay, I probably should have looked, but I was really excited to try this thing out, and you probably can see the sleeves upside down in some of the B-rolls before I fixed it. Now let's quickly talk about some alternatives in competition for this bar. I think maybe the most logical place to start is Titan's cambered multi-grip bar. And that's because they're similar enough in price and geometry. And y'all know, I love me some Titan. But I like Rep's bar over Titan's for a few reasons. First, it's not a blatantly stolen idea with Titan just trying to copy Elite FTS's American cambered bar. Not that this bar is an entirely novel idea, but the build quality, chrome sleeves, and removable eye bolt, for example, in my opinion, make this bar worth the $90 more that it costs. The camber depth is essentially identical and the handles are a bit different, though they both have three sets with two pairs of Titan's handles utilizing that camber depth. But looking at them both, it's not hard to see some similarities. But one last thing that might be really important to you is that Rep's bar will fit better in a narrower 47 inch outside width rack, so 41 inch inside. So a rack like this, because it's designed to do so. And Titan's bar might be a little bit more of a tight fit than some people are comfortable with. 
From there, I think maybe the next logical comparison is Bells of Steel Arch Nemesis bar, which I should probably go get so we can compare it. They're different enough in price and build, but I don't really think they're trying to accomplish the same thing. But it is an obvious comparison to be made with three sets of handles, and they're both cambered, and they can both hook into your cable machine, but you're probably not buying multiple cambered bars because, I mean, who would do that? So I'd say check out our review of that bar here if you're interested as it'll answer any of the questions you might have better than me just trying to cram it all in there. Now I know a lot of people are gonna wanna automatically compare this to Kabuki's Cadillac bar, but I think they're different enough in that one's a flat cambered bar that you can hook up to a cable, and the other has a barrel camber and is closer to the Arch Nemesis bar. I still think Kabuki's is the better bench bar with reps being the more versatile choice, and like with the Arch Nemesis bar, comparing something that costs twice as much, or in this case, isn't truly designed to do the same thing can be a bit silly. Now if it sounds like I nitpicked or I really don't like this bar, that's not true at all. I'm just trying to give you the most honest and thorough look I can at this thing. In reality, I really like it. I think it does a lot of things well and it will 100% creep into a ton of my workouts. You can do so much with a bar like this and it addresses two of the main issues we have with home gyms lack of money and lack of space. Well, this really helps with both. A ton of versatility and quality and a single item. Like, comment, and subscribe to boost us on the algorithm. Hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.